Hello folks, welcome back. I am the one, the only Hobo Tom. And I have to get stuff kind of done early because I have to go to work tomorrow. Tomorrow morning at 6.30 I have to wake up. Leave the house at 7? Been the earliest I've woken up. Jeez, I think in about two months. I did apply to two other jobs, too. That's cool. We'll see what they say. <laughs> I kind of know what the one's going to say. Uh, I just... I, I just need my, my hoo-ha. My hoo-ha. <laughs> I'm tired. What's wrong with me? Chispa, you wore me out. Probably still recovering from my spa week, but enough about this nonsense. You can see my cat as she saunters out. Probably going to use her litter box or, or get a quick little snack. I know she found a... I think a frog got in the lanai yesterday. I know she brought a lizard in the house today, so she's probably looking for those critters. Again, if you have a cat, just let them hunt in the backyard for lizards. Ten minutes of the hunt and... Playing with lizard until lizard is dead probably equals like at least half hour of good human interaction playtime. And besides, and it looks like got this nice little like wad of fuzz off of her. So we had our good fun human interaction. Yep, there we go. And that makes it look a little bit better. That looks like a fuzzy turd. I'm not handling turds. Nope. That's the fuzz I got off for her. The heck was that? Oh, whatever. No, I'm here to talk about some SmackDown. They're on point. WWE has finally figured out stuff. Even though my WooTube wasn't working, I managed to watch things by a different way. <laughs> Heck is wrong with me? I woke up at like 2 p.m. Like, got out of the house at 2 p.m. Wait a second, I think I did wake up at 2 p.m. That doesn't bode well for tomorrow morning, but we'll see. It doesn't matter. I'm getting breakfast tomorrow. Free breakfast. And I think I do have to go get my one piece. So that won't be too bad. And I have to write stuff down. Write jobs down. I can do that tomorrow. Write jobs down. Call place. I'm all set. So, uh, with SmackDown, it opens up. Shane has a statement. I cannot make it because Kevin Owens is... Yeah, it's, it's just whatever. It's kind of a recap of last week's. Kevin Owens comes out, dishes out a pretty good promo. Drew then gives his own promo and then continues to just then starts to destroy Kevin Owens. And this leads up to the first match of the night, so that's pretty good. I just need a little, a little sugar in my yummy cream soda. Creme soda. So we have Drew McIntyre versus Kevin Owens to start off the night. Drew is smart. I know it was a pretty standard match. Instead of grabbing the hair, which is illegal, in judo and jujitsu, you can grab the gi. And also in sambo. And to take Kevin Owens down, he just grabs his shirt, pull him down. Smart. Referee can't say, it's like, well, he didn't pull the hair, so that's a good sign. And as always, I had my wrestling shirt on. Clothesline wrestling shirt. Bullet Club shirt's in the, in the wash. The Macho Man shirt's in the dryer. I'm saving my SPLL shirt. Southern Pro Lucha Libre. One day we'll be coming to the Great Daytona area. I'll be wearing that for Triple Mania. Oh, so I hope WooTube gets its issues fixed. Log this by Friday night. I'm good with that. 
We probably just have to update every so often. Like, yeah, this was a very classic Kevin Owens match. I mean, he does a cannonball, and then he starts flying. Fly, KO, fly. That was good. Drew kicked out of the pop-up powerbomb. Now his finisher is reduced to a signature. That's, I think, one common theme we've been seeing recently is that people have had to switch finishers and their old finisher from, like, years ago is now becoming their signature move. So we'll see what happens. Uh, again, Kevin Owens hit a senton from the top rope. Uh, frog splash from the top rope. Fly, KO, fly. And then Drew, <laughs> Drew kicked out of the pop up power bomb. That was amazing. And then they got to the outside, and then Kevin Owens busts out the stunner on the table. I don't think the table broke. I forget. I was kind of trying to fix him to eat dinner and stuff. He had a stunner in the ring. Kevin Owens picks up the victory on our way to SummerSlam. Amazing first match. This was a classic surf and turf match. Then we have a Dolph interview. Yeah, whatever. Alistair Black wants another fight. And uh, then we have Ember, Moon, and Bailey team up to take on Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. This was pretty good. Again, the action was fast-paced. Um, <laughs> Alexa Bliss was funny. She was, like, going to, like, give her gloves off because she comes out wearing her, her, like, bone gloves. And instead she, like, drops them, like, right in front of some little girl. Still, heel Alexa Bliss is a good Alexa Bliss. So... You won't hear complaints about me for, about that. Uh, it was a pretty good match. I mean, some good stuff. Whoa, some of those women can fly. I know Ember Moon can fly. Nikki Cross can fly. Alexa Bliss really isn't known for jumping through the ropes, though. She did. She pulled that off pretty good. Um, Bailey was was the victim a little bit. And wow, Bailey's the tallest woman in the ring. That's weird. I've never seen. No, I correct myself. I have seen Bailey at, I think it was the last row I went to. Oh, well, because I knew because I saw that, yeah, because I saw them setting up the um, inflatable, wacky, wavy arm car sales and things. Uh, ah, ah. So, yeah, I saw them set up those things. But, yeah, it was Bailey. In person, she's tall and really skinny. Really, almost that lanky and awkward. But in this case, she was the tallest woman in the ring. I'll tell you what, Ember Moon short. Damn, she's solid, though. Woo! One day we will see that full Ember Moon, though. We've, I've seen a partial Nikki Cross. Crescent. Yeah, I guess you could call it that. Alexa Bliss, her 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 thing is just way too up. A lot of bottom shelf in Alexa Bliss. Again, Alexa Bliss, Buddy Murphy's not around anymore, or um Blake, Leslie Blake and Buddy Murphy. Yeah, one of those. Oh yeah, Buddy Murphy. Like I remember when he was in NXT. So I shouted, your girlfriend's more popular than you are. Oh. So again, they did the apron spot. That's okay. Um, I like the fact that they're reserving that for every so often. Nikki Cross isn't doing it all the time, which is good because it makes it, it, it gives it that signature feel and makes it feel special. Ember Moon missed on the again a whole bunch of flying stuff. It was it was fun. Alexa Bliss did her Twisted Bliss because Ember Moon missed. I think Nikki Cross pulled her out of the pulled. Nikki Cross pulled Alexa Bliss out of the way of the eclipse. Yeah, I said Ember Moon does the eclipse. Yeah. Confused. 
Then, so Alexa Bliss hits a Twisted Bliss on Ember Moon. Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross win. And then seems Ember Moon's upset. Bailey's kind of trying to console her. Then Bailey turns heel. Heel Bailey, finally. Yes. Been waiting for this for, geez, how many years? A heel Bailey? That's good. She hit a Bailey to belly on Ember Moon. God, that's still the worst finisher ever. Only because you see the number of belly to bellies that, that drew the overhead German style belly to belly that, that drew McIntyre hit on Kevin Owens. And you're like, one regular belly to belly suplex is going to do it? Weak. But this match overall, this was another fun match. This was a good quality cheeseburger match. And we have Sami Zayn. I guess set up a match between him and Aleister Black. Good luck, Sami. Uh, Daniel Bryan stills just annoyed because he doesn't want to make his announcement yet. Then it's a King's Court segment with Jerry the King Lawler, Memphis's own. I think that's where they're from. In Memphis, Tennessee, so that makes sense. Um, he starts to interview Trish Stratus. Yeah. Yeah, Trish Stratus. Um, Charlotte Flair comes out, I guess, challenges Trish to match at SummerSlam because it, it's in Toronto. Whatever. Whatever match. To be the woman, you got to beat the woman. Woo! Then the club. <laughs> So AJ Styles has a match. Champion versus champion. So that's pretty cool. I think the good and bad thing is they've done away with the wild card rule. The stars are shining. But the thing is, now they're trying to make room for everyone else. So that's going to be tricky to see how that goes on in the future. Right now, it's pretty good. We'll see what happens in the future. And Carl Anderson, no more champagne. I think we've had enough champagne. We have the Firefly Funhouse. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, again, this is so entertaining. Ramblin' Rabbit's going to turn into Rabbit Pace soon, though, because he, he tried to, he's trying to warn Finn. Finn. The Firefly Funhouse isn't what it looks like. You don't understand. And then the f and then Bray Wyatt shows up, and the rabbit runs away, probably to be eaten. I think that was Abby the Witch was screaming. Um, hopefully, Huskus the Pig eats Ramblin' Rabbit soon. That'd be funny. <laughs> Instead of a chocolate bar, you just see Ramblin' Rabbit breakfast bread all over his mouth. That would be good. Uh, so again, this is good. This is a lead up to that. And then you have a, a Brock and Seth recap what happened, how, how Brock almost murdered Seth Rollins, which is pretty cool. Then we have Dolph Ziggler comes out in his normal entrance and faces Finn Balor. Blue Balor always loses, though. Red Balor's the best. Pumpkin Bell has to come out of race often. In fact, I have to find if I can find the Pumpkin Club t shirt. I know a friend that would really like it. Um, this match, for the most part, it's class from both. Both can sell really good. The action was pretty good paced. Uh, once Finn started to take control of the match, though, the lights went out, and Finn suffers from Sethitis. Because, wow, did he get distracted! Very quickly, by the way, after a couple of good stomps. Oh, Cody turned. He moved by Dolph. But he was distracted enough by the Fiend on the Titan Tron for Dolph to hit sweet chin music. Whoa. Dolph wins the match? 
Indeed. Although it was by distraction, so you can't say you can't really read too much into that. Um, with that being said, it was a fun match. It was, the distraction kind of took away from it a little bit. I see the reason why. And you know what? This is eh, a good ham sandwich. Then there's Shinsuke Nakamura taking on Mustafa Ali. Fly, Ali, fly. Here's another guy who's doing crazy flippy stuff. He is not used to, however, the strong style of Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, Shinsuke Nakamura continues to bust out new moves. Here's that kind of short, and, that short DDT, which is pretty good. It was really fast-paced. The match seemed to go a lot quicker. The, the match was quick, but they did fit a lot in there. I think the match was only like seven minutes-ish. No, it was under ten minutes. It was really quick. And then Ali learned something from my princess, Kimberly. Because he learned how to do the alligator clutch and alligator clutch roll-up. That would win all the time. Ali pins Shinsuke Nakamura. Even though it was a short match, they fit a lot in there. The thing is, with all the action they did, it didn't seem short. I know if it's like a rest hold match, like long matches are like... Oh, this again. Oh, go back. No, this match was pretty well paced, very fast paced. This is a good... Cheeseburger match. Then we have um, a Randy Orton promo about him between him and Kofi Kingston. Then, of course, New Day cut their promo, and I like the fact that they're doing this. Oh, Memphis, don't you dare be sour. Clap. For your WWE and SmackDown Tag Team Champions. And feel the power. It's a new day. Yes, it is. You have to kind of groove to that. That's pretty cool. So it was Kofi Kingston versus AJ Styles. Wow. Again, this was a very classic start. They gave this match probably about 15 plus minutes, I think. <laughs> It might have been less than that, but it's a very traditional match by AJ Styles. Again, he picked up so much in New Japan where you have a slow start, but you build. And because you're building, it, it elevates the tension. It's like, oh, when, when's the finish going to be? Oh, is, is that going to be the finish? Oh, wait, they're going to evolve. What's going to happen here? What's going to happen here? Oh, yeah. And it, and it gets... It gets you vested into the match, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, again, AJ Styles, so good at mad wrestling. Kofi Kings was really good, too. Again, really classic wrestling stuff. Not a lot of rest holds. Rest holds with purpose. I mean, you put a guy in a headlock for the, for the take takedown. Step back, go off the ropes. The whole sequence. Last 15 seconds, that's not, not bad. It's better than sitting there for like a minute and a half in a headlock saying, I am a master of the headlock. Whatever. There's only one match of the headlock. That's Hobo Tom. Actually, Delirious is the master of the headlock. That's a whole other issue. It's a whole, whole other story one day. Again, it was, again, the Matt Wrestling was good. AJ Styles, he that double knees off the apron. That looked like it hurt, as well as Kofi. Kofi hit the Tornado DDT. Um, AJ Styles kicked out the SOS, which is really good. Again, the signature. Um, then, of course, everyone on the outside, because the New Day was there to support their man, Kofi Kingston. The the club was there. Gallows and Anderson were there to support AJ Styles. Eventually, a schmoz broke out. Um, Kofi kind of stumbled into the ring. AJ Styles went for the phenomenal form, got caught by the trouble in paradise. Which is actually what I like because it's one of those moves that can come out of nowhere. Just like the RKO. 
So the Ark out of nowhere, you have the trouble in, you have the trouble in paradise out of nowhere. It's really building up. Kofi has a counter that's equally as out of nowhere as the RKO. That's what I take from it. Again, if you want to, you can always leave a comment or an email, although I haven't... I have to do that, too. So much stuff I do have for you, and now I have no time to do with it. So with that being said, um, that was supposed to be an interview with Roman Reigns. Someone tried to commit murder on TV again. Whoa. Because someone tossed down the scaffolding. But there was no Braun Strowman there, though. We saw no graphic. Indeed. We'll see what happens. Next time on SmackDown. You know what? This makes me invest in the show. It makes me want to tune in again. That's what they should do. That was sma oh um oh the AJ Styles Kofi Kingston before I end that was a surf and turf quality match. And that was SmackDown and a really wow back to back good shows by WWE. No more kitten fuss. That was amazing though. Smackdown again, a really good show. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Um, stay tuned. Hopefully, the my um, issues with the internet get cleared up after kind of a good old fashioned hard restart. You never know; they might have had to do technical stuff. Um, every so often, things on the internet do need like a, a little break, and then probably. Uh, maybe even tomorrow night. Maybe t I don't know. I'll, I'll see how I feel. But definitely by Friday. Oh, shoot. I can't do that Friday night. Yeah, so definitely by Thursday. I'll have my Triple Media predictions. I won't have my predictions. I think that filthy, disgusting Mexican. Spaniard, Puerto Rican loser, El Vagabundo dos Bro, uh, Cuatro shows up. Maybe he'll give his insight to triple ma to triple mania. And that everyone have a good night, and I'll see, well I'll see everyone definitely. I hope Friday night for Impact Wrestling. Bye.